Thank you. Thank you. Hi, and uh, good morning, and welcome to the New Yorker Festival and this morning's conversation with Roz Chast. Uh, those of you who don't know who Roz Chast is, please leave <laughs> now. Um, what I find so special about Roz Chast is that her cartoons are hilariously funny, they're insightful, uh, they're of their own kind, and her creativity has continued now for over 30 years, and she has the same strength she had when she began. And um, today there will be some insights, some laughter, and if we're lucky, lots and lots of tears. So <laughs> let's bring out Roz Chast. Um, I was going to do this before we began, I, but I, I forgot. I, this is uh, Roz's new book, Theories of Everything. Are you happy now? I held it up. <laughs> and I was looking through it last night, and I, not only uh, the cartoons are drawn so brilliantly, but there is so much literature involved, so much writing. And I uh, just found a piece last night, and uh, you don't even have to see the cartoon. I'll just read it to you. I'm sorry to do this in front of you. I was going to do it before you came out, but I forgot because it's so early. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classified ad, and it says, Opportunity of a Lifetime. Fast-growing Midtown Corp. needs bright, articulate male-female to reorganize 760,000 files from top to bottom, fire four people, nobody else will, and take care of children aged three and one. Must be certified in Unex, GOM, Cisco, CRIM, LEM, Zot, Phoenix, Jod, and Fraun. Own car a necessity. Also, up-to-date trucking license. <laughs> Knowledge of quantum physics, short order cookery helpful. Can you type? Even better. If you have 250,000 cash and are not afraid of large dogs, we're looking for you. At least 12 years experience required, personable, attractive college grads only. Starting salary, 9K. <laughs> Welcome. We'll just go through a few catalogs to introduce you to uh, our lovely audience here. We're going to start with this one, the Gods of Catalogdom. This is a, a starting off with a few recent cartoons in the magazine. Uh, this is the Gods of Catalogs. This is three gods on little clouds kind of floating through the sky, dropping catalogs on all the buildings in New York. And the first one says, the tenant in 4J is dig with child and so will soon covet baby things. And uh, this one says, a young man of 13 dwelleth in abode 11N. Let him receive the bounty of skateboard itemia. <laughs> and uh, the last one says, um, and so it came to pass that the woman of 6B became 50. Behold the catalogs of thy golden years. <laughs> and uh, the catalog is, it's called Crone Source. <laughs> and I started noticing, when I, when I started getting to be a certain unspecific age that shall not be mentioned, these catalogs started coming that were like, you know, do you need help getting out of the bathtub? <laughs> And it was like, well, wait a minute. Like 15 minutes ago, you were sending me, you know, baby catalogs and things like that. And now you're sending me, like, orthopedic, you know, underwear. And it's... <laughs> I'm sorry. curious what orthopedic underwear would look like, but... Yeah. A lot of chains yeah. and pulleys involved. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, next. Uh, we... um, this, this is uh, the, the faith that awaits us all. Uh, creeping Rooneyism. Um... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. And I like Andy Rooney, but there's a kind of like tone in his voice sometimes. It's like, who is this Justin Timberlake anyhow? <laughs> and you know what I hate? Cordless phones. And it's like, the green Oreos, blue ketchup in my day, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you just hear, wah, wah, wah. Now, I just want to remark on this because this is a very, very specific interior that we're going to get to. This is very typical of your cartoons. And we just take note of that, file yes. that away. We like wallpaper. <laughs> like wallpaper, not. Um, and this is another. Uh, <laughs> um, this is, 
this is um, at, at the corner of irate and insane, yeah. and uh, mad because she isn't Bob Dylan, um, furious because it isn't the 18th century, angry because The Wizard of Oz was fiction, and enraged by inability to fly. Now, I, as I look at this cartoon, I realize there, there's one here I absolutely identify with, which is enraged by inability to fly. At, at that age, I absolutely was. And I assume that in this audience, every, everyone can pick one and say, oh, that's me. Yeah. Now, uh, okay, we've established Roz Chast as a great cartoonist fine, so far today. Yeah. And, uh, but I want to talk five about... Five minutes. Yeah, I want, in, in five minutes we did that. <laughs> I, I want to talk about how you got your start, because what we're going to do is show Roz's uh, first cartoon that was accepted by The New Yorker in 1978. And can you, not yet. Oh, not yet. No, okay. no, no, okay, no, no. Okay. I'm going to build right. this up. Okay, me? now. No, yeah. kidding. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, you, we were talking earlier about this, the state of cartooning. You, you were age 23. It's 23. Um, I had always liked to draw cartoons. Uh, uh, well, I liked to draw pictures that made me laugh from the time I was really, really little. And like age what? Four like five. four, four uh -huh. or five. Um, I just, I like, I always loved to draw, and I liked to laugh, and I liked to draw pictures that made me laugh. The people you liked as cartoonists, you're in your early 20s or late teens, you're looking at a few cartoonists, and t talk a little bit about the state of cartooning at that moment. Um, well, it was, it was a very strange thing when I started out. There was underground cartoons, which were definitely an influence. Um, but I didn't feel like I really fit so much in with that. Um, and there were magazines, but it wasn't really the golden age of cartooning as I understand it. I mean, at one point, there were lots and lots of markets for cartoonists. Uh, when I got into the field in 78, there was pretty much Playboy and the New Yorker, as far as if you wanted to make your living being a magazine cartoonist. And I never really thought I was going to wind up doing cartoons for the New Yorker because at that point, most of the cartoons there, uh, there were exceptions, but most of them were what I think of as kind of genre cartoons. They were, you know, gag line cartoons, uh, things where, you know, two guys would be sitting in a bar and maybe saying funny things to each other or uh, an office situation or a boardroom or a pie chart or, uh, you know, just these various um, a desert island. And the things that I found funny didn't really have any place there, I didn't think. But and you were saying earlier that they uh, had, uh, often the cartoonist was separate from the writer. Yeah. So. Well, that had started to change. In, by the 60s, but okay. for many, many years, uh, from the beginning until pretty much through the 60s, there was one person who did the drawings, and then there were these people who were gag writers, and the artists would often buy gags from people. And when I first started, I would get these packets, and they were really funny. Uh, well, they weren't that funny, <laughs> actually. But um, <laughs> there were things like, you know, two guys sitting in a bar, and then and I'd say, well, wait a minute, does this person even have any idea what I do? Because, you know, I was doing the little boxes, but that was what... Okay, now, you've, you've packed, packed together some cartoons. Right. And you, how do you get them to the New Yorker? Well, when I started um, in 78, I called the New Yorker, and I found out they had something called a drop-off day. And that's where you take all your cartoons and you drop them off and sort of wait to see what happens. So I got together. I had no idea how many to, to put in. I just, at that point, I'd been doing some illustration work, which wasn't going very well, because I wasn't really that interested in it, and doing a lot of cartoons myself. Uh, so I packed up about 60 cartoons and put them in this, one of those brown envelopes that you know, you buy at a stationery store with a rubber band thing around it with a little hole. And, uh, I think we got the picture. You got yeah. the picture, yeah. yeah. I like those things. I, I, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that relates to your work because the, 
there's so much detail of these strange little household uh, objects, which we're going to yes. talk about later, like yes, uh, electrical could... cords. You seem to love electrical cords. We could talk about that envelope yeah. for the next yeah. 40 yeah. minutes. But, <laughs> but anyway, so here we are in the, yeah. we're in the state of these cartoons, of, you know, Desert Island cartoons, which are funny. We're not criticizing them, but it's a certain type of cartooning. And I, in looking at this first cartoon that the New Yorker uh, accepted, it's almost shocking. It, to it, me. Was, it was shocking to me, too. I mean, yeah. I really did not expect, because even with my stuff, this was probably the weirdest one of the lot. Right. So you know? uh, we've teased them enough. Yes. Now? now? Yeah. now? Yes, now. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, is, this is one of those things that is funny later. <laughs> you know... Uh, really, it, you, you, you're, you keep working on it and working on it, and finally you realize, no, that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I could use these words. I, I, I know an anchor in the lower left there. Yeah. I use that all the time. Yeah. Make but, sure you get the triangle right, though. Because if you leave oh, out triangle. that last yeah, little yeah. triangle, well, you don't have an anchor anymore. Well, these exist in nature, the TIV yes. in the upper right. Anyway, and, and, and do you recall any reaction to it? Was it? Yeah, it was uh, kind of hated. Um, <laughs> was it? Um, well, my, my editor, Lee Lorenz, told me later that uh, when they started running my things, somebody asked him whether uh, he owed my family money. <laughs> <laughs> now, are there things you, you really like to draw? I mean, objects that appeal to you? Yes. I, I love uh, to draw interiors. Mm -hmm. um, many, most, many of your cartoons are interiors. Yes. Yeah. I, love, I love lamps. Lamps? Uh, lamps are good. And, and what was the, the source? I know you, you grew up in Brooklyn. Yes. And do the, these interiors reflect... Where you grew up? Yeah, house. yeah. I think uh, I spent a lot of time indoors studying these mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. lamps, and uh, they, I, I think they're kind of funny looking now, in a way. I think we have a photo of a lamp from your parents' house. Yes, yes. now go. Um, this, this is the actual lamp. This is the actual lamp with a kind of a photoshopped in, drawn in background because I really wanted you to see this wonderful lamp. I like this lamp because it has also the table thing in the middle. Um, space age. It's, it's, yeah. <laughs> and convenient. It's a space saver. Uh, I once did here, I haven't actually seen this kind of lamp in person, but a lamp that not only had a table, but had a, a wastebasket thing <laughs> also <laughs> at the bottom. So it combined many functions in one. Now, let's uh, uh, look at the next cartoon, which actually has a rendering of this lamp in it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is. <laughs> um, <laughs> a birth, birth, bed, bath, beer, bankruptcy, bunions, bifocals, balding, and, and beyond. Yeah. And is this character uh, is someone in your life, or have you? Uh, no, he's yeah. kind of a blend of yeah. people. Mm -hmm. um, um, now this next one is fascinating. This is, uh, <laughs> um, uh, this is your, obviously one of your modern interiors. Yeah. Uh, when did this run? Do you re is this an older one? This is an older one. Mm -hmm. You can tell by the dust on the slide. Um, <laughs> this probably ran maybe 84 or something like I'm that. I'm very curious about reaction. You know, I found, uh, if I could talk about myself for one second, that <laughs> you, uh, if you make a movie you, or, or do something, you, you get an immediate reaction, yes. and then there's another reaction five years later, and then there's another reaction 10 or 15 years later, whether it's like it might have been a big hit, and then it's five years later nobody mentions it stinks, and 15 years later it's great or it's horrible. Do you have that with cartoons, like a, a, a resonance that continues on? I think, I think cartoons are more ephemeral, maybe mm -hmm. because they, you know, the, the new week, and so there's always a sort of new image. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very... 
But I, I find your cartoons really just living in my memory, which we're going to get to later. The one, I'm sure everybody here has a favorite. Um, and that's one was a favorite film. Anyway, um, <laughs> now this gets us to something about the, the inanimate object. Talk, talk about, you, you seem to love to, to, to draw these weird things or these uh, um, very mundane things. Well, my mother uh, had a phrase that she used when I was growing up. Uh, she called it the conspiracy of the inanimate. I don't know if she got it some, from somebody else, but it was sort of uh, how these things kind of have a little bit of a life of their own. Let's go to the next question while you're talking ah, about that. Okay. Your work. Um, and this Why don't was, you read this first? Okay. Yeah. This is uh, Get Well Cards for Under the Weather Appliances. Um, this is Get Well Soon for TV sets. Contrast's gone, picture shot, don't know what it is you've got, you'll soon be fixed, but even so, we miss your cheerful little glow. <laughs> um, this is a, a hair dryer. Uh, cold blows warm, hot blows cold. Fact is, friend, you're getting old. <laughs> Hope you repair it soon. And uh, this is to a sick dryer. You burned a shirt, you char charred the socks, you gave the folks electric shocks. A leaky hose, a missing screw, we hope that's all that's wrong with you. <laughs> Very true. Now, when I was talking with Roz, uh, I was saying many of your interiors that you draw, your exteriors, are very, very middle class. I said, do you ever do kind of super modern, uh, and, and you expressed a certain difficulty with it. Yeah. And so I gave Roz an assignment to go to Architectural Digest, and pick out uh, one of the you know, very modern Bauhaus interior, uh, modern design, and, and uh, draw it as best she can. So let's look at the photo from Architectural Digest yes. that you picked. It's Here we have a very, very uh, modern, classic uh, interior, very spare. And now you promised me that you would draw this yes. with no attempt at humors. Yes. Just to see yes. how you did. So yes. let's let's just take a look okay. at how you did. <laughs> <laughs> you have da da yeah. and yeah. da da. It's amazing. There's there's almost no difference. There, I know. I know. <laughs> it's uh <laughs> Well they they helped a little bit because well the title of the magazine on the table in the photo was Distinction World. And <laughs> I don't know, that, that seemed kind of great to me. Like, uh, not to put you on the spot, is there a caption for this in your head or not? I think Distinction World okay. is... is <laughs> this might be a, a back of the uh, New Yorker uh, name that caption contest. Yeah, it's... Yeah. Uh, well, I, I like... There were so many funny things in this photo, I mean, the the, the thing on the coffee <laughs> table, the head. <laughs> I just, I cannot even imagine like what you'd be doing. Like, you know, you're kind of going to sit down, you're going to watch some TV or something, <laughs> and then there's this like head staring at you. <laughs> that's that's actually the owner. <laughs> I hope it talks. <laughs> like, get to work. <laughs> Turn off that show. That's crap. <laughs> I don't know. I guess they're really trying to make it look very uh, classy. And I love when they have, like, books stacked like that, too. It just... Uh, I'm curious, I'm curious do, you, do you ever take outside ideas from people, or, or do people try to give you ideas? Yeah. Yeah, dentists. And, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of fun. I'm not really good at taking people's... Uh, they usually are off the mark somehow. Yeah, they're like the kind idea. of off the mark. It's kind yeah. of like, you know, when you collect something sometimes, mm -hmm. and then somebody decides they're going to add an object to your collection, and right. they found the perfect thing, and it's really not. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of like, oh, this is great. Thanks. Yeah. Speaking of collecting things, do you, you get inspiration from magazines, from do you tear out things? Yeah. Do you make mental snapshots? I, I do. I mean, I, I, there's... Magazines are great. I mean, I, for a while, uh, I got a magazine that I loved. It was called Snack Food, and yeah. it was 
it was for the snack food industry, and it was just amazing. I mean, I, it had articles on, uh, um, like, there was, there was this new term that I learned for chips called mouth clearance. And, like, um, it, it had to do with, uh, like, how big the chip was, like, when you put it oh. in your mouth. <laughs> kind of like a car going, going into a garage or something. <laughs> I heard, a, uh, I heard a scientific term, which I, I actually like a lot. It's called bug flux. Bug flux. And the what bug is flux is where the, the bugs from the land meet the bugs from the sea. And it oh, may be five or ten miles in. And it's called the bug flux. Anyway, let's move on to the... <laughs> they, enough about me. Do they fight? <laughs> I don't know what they do. It's like, uh, why don't we move on okay, to the next okay. cartoon? Uh, okay. Now, we're talking about these objects again. <laughs> This, um, this, this cartoon, uh, this is uh, the gifts from the House of Low Goals. Uh, there's T-shirts, um, I survived conjunctivitis, uh, I can read a bus schedule, 100% um, human DNA, uh, the spe special occasion cakes, wow, only six cavities, um, happy tattoo removal, and no loitering arrests in one year. <laughs> Cards, uh, I'm so glad you're not an arsonist. And, um, congratulations on your new easy chair. And uh, trophies, participant. <laughs> and, uh, That's hilarious. Now, what is the, the next one? I know we're getting, we're getting to some uh, actual photos. 60, okay. Uh, okay. This is... Um, this cartoon is the 60-hour gourmet, and, I'll, and I'll, I can read it, uh, even though it's, like, very wordy. Um, this is recipes for people who have time to spare and then some. By the way, this is what I'm talking about, the writing aspect of this. This, this would be funny without the cartoons. Yes, but pictures are fun. I, I understand. So, okay. <laughs> this is painstaking peas. Uh, before cooking, peel 600 peas. Um, <laughs> Boil, then arrange in a festive manner on a serving platter. <laughs> um, this is never-ending bread. Mix bread dough as usual. Let rise until double. Punch down, let rise again. <laughs> punch down, let rise, punch down, <laughs> let rise, punch down, rise, punch, rise, punch, rise, punch, rise, bake and serve. Um, this is slow and steady chicken. Uh, wash chicken in a lukewarm bubble bath for uh, about one hour. Then rinse for 30 minutes. Stuff with difficult stuffing, that's see page 883, <laughs> using a doll spoon and truss with an itsy bitsy needle and the teensy weensiest stitch you can. Cook at 125 degrees for 32 hours and just prior to serving, carve into the shape of a rose. Um, and uh, the, the last one is handmade carrot juice. Begin by mincing raw carrots with a butter knife. Then keep going until the whole thing reaches a liquid consistency. You have kids. Yes. And I think you get a lot of inspiration from them. Yes. Um, I... Yes, please do. This, this um, was uh, sort of a, a kid's thing. I don't know if you have kids, but they're always telling you to look. Hey, Mom, look. Look. And this is, tooth is hanging by a thread. Um, soda can is bulging. Uh, black and blue mark is completely gone. Um, parakeet has particularly cute expression on his face. Uh, someone who looks like gym teacher on TV. Um, cut on toe, opened up again. Um, and learn how to make smoke come out of the computer. <laughs> and the, the mom is saying, that, that can't be good for it, can it? This is a full color. Uh, do you sketch it and then you do a, a second draft or? Yeah, well, the way it works for me is I usually draw about five to seven cartoons every week and I submit sketches. And uh, I draw them in pen, I draw them very loosely. Um, but they're kind of, the whole idea is usually there. And then the, they decide if they want to buy anything. And sometimes they buy one, sometimes occasionally they buy two, sometimes they don't buy any. But if they buy a drawing, then 
I take that sketch and I redraw it. I usually sketch it in pencil and I just make it better and I kind of eliminate the parts of the drawing that look crappy. And well, I, I'm you know. so curious the idea. We're just seeing one great cartoon after another and this book is filled with cartoons. The idea that something is rejected, it seems almost impossible, but I, we all, that's part of our lives is rejection. Yeah, I think especially as a cartoonist, I mean, most of our lives is rejection. I mean, it, it's that's. <laughs> and how do you uh, how do you reconcile a, a cartoon you think is hilarious with the, its rejection? Um, well, do you resubmit it. I do. Uh -huh. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I resubmit it. You know, seven or eight times until you know I think they're ready to, you know call me up and scream at me and like we don't want to see this one ever again mm -hmm. but sometimes I try to trick them because I'll like change the title you know <laughs> yeah. uh, or just like change one little detail it's like they won't remember this one but yeah if I really you must like hate something. a lot of people who are they oh <laughs> yeah, we'll talk <laughs> no, about right. that afterwards um, let's take another look yes another scientific cartoon which uh, this uh, ran in the sciences. Um, this is a, uh, it starts out at the top. Aunt Clara gives person ugly, itchy sweater. Sweater is thrown away. Bag is carted to dump. After 10 million, 10,000 years, dump becomes earth again. Grass grows on the site. Grass is eaten by sheep. Wool is taken from sheep and fashioned into ugly, itchy sweater. So. Now this is an older cartoon. Yes, this is an older one. This was uh, in a science magazine, but it, it just goes to show how, you know, they were very open as to what they accepted. Because, um, I mean, this really isn't terribly scientific, except that it's really about kids' kind of curiosity. And these were actual questions that my son, when he was seven, asked me. You know, is, is there an oil that is really sour that they give kids? How much is a zebra worth? <laughs> um, if you shot a bullet, would it go into space? Are there poisonous cactuses that could kill you if you got pricked? How many degrees can melt skin? Um, are there aliens? Could there be? How many? 25,000? Are monkeys ever mean? How about small monkeys? Um, how much do wigs cost? Could they cost a million dollars? Is the president still alive? Um, but I just love that he has, for some reason, a square head. Right? <laughs> what is going on in your mind at that moment when you draw the president with a square head? Can you answer well, that? Well, he's, yes, he's, right. he's kind of dead there. But why he oh. his head turns, yeah, because he's green, his I eyes see. are X's. Uh -huh. okay. He's, he's dead. I've got to get a sense of humor. Go ahead. Yeah, you've got, you've got, to, you've got to look at more dead yeah. presidents, the squareness. Um, is, is the guy who walked on the moon rich? Is he richer than us? Do you have to get special markings to go to China? And then the last one, and I know this is my fault because, you know, I, I shouldn't really have talked about things like this with my children when they were very young, but, you know, I did. Um, is if a kid is born with three legs and his parents wanted to leave the extra leg on, could the doctor force them to let the kid have the leg removed? <laughs> and, you know, I like... What can I say? I like parasitic twins. Yeah. I mean, I like, yeah. you know, the whole thing. It's, it's I can't decide if that's an ethical question or a legal question. I think it's both. Uh, yeah. I think it's both. Well, let's just keep going. We're having a okay. lot of fun. Okay. This is another scientific <laughs> one. <laughs> I love that the uh, this cartoon is, speak, is so eloquent and yet so simple. It's and I love that it's figure 1A. Figure 1A, yeah. yeah. Um, theories of everything. Theories of everything. Uh, everything There's the lamp, our friend the lamp. Our friend the lamp. lamp. A different lamp, doesn't have a little table, but the cord is still yeah, going off. The cord is there. Uh, everything's gone downhill since 1964. Everything is my fault. Everything is your fault. <laughs> and everything would be perfect if I had a dirt bike. Now, this, this kid is uh, appearing a lot. Yeah. Too. Is he. Rel uh, here in your life, or you see him on the street, you're, it's in your imagination. He's kind of a boy. Yeah. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a science sort of thing. This was the first cover I did for The New Yorker. Ooh. And uh, it's sort of like an evolutionary chart about ice cream. Um, yeah. And uh, just how, you know, it starts out with you have your ball of vanilla ice cream and it's different, like, forms. and. It's now, this next one I, I found fabulously 
frightening. What children over here? You yes. want to read that? Yes. Uh, this because this one, is so true to life. They, they, nobody ever took this cartoon. This was unpublished except I put it in one of my collections because I, I liked it. But it's, she bent down to pick up the pencil, and when she stood up, she was blind in her left eye. <laughs> when he woke up, his feet had swollen to the size of watermelons. Her scalp became infected, so they had to remove it. His fingernails all fell off, one by one. Uh, they drilled a hole in his larynx and put in a pipe that stretched clear across the room. <laughs> and Mrs. Cleary's son was born with two stomachs, but he didn't find out till he was 36. <laughs> now, I, I'm just curious how the, the process of dreaming this up, dreaming up, do you get stuck? They just seem to come out? Well, this... This one was probably based on things from my own childhood, mm -hmm. like weird things that I had overheard. And I remember overhearing when I was little my uh, uncle and my mother talking that a guy that my uncle knew, and it was that when he woke up, he was bleeding from every pore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's very hard. That's hard to do, by the way. Yes. Yeah. And I took it totally literally. It was like I knew what pores were. I knew that they were those things in your skin. And I just thought, that can't be good. That, <laughs> you know, now, I don't want that to happen to me. Before you show this next one, the, I'm going to tell the title. Okay. Don't show it yet. The, the MRI of Love. Now, can you talk about I mean, it? Because it's, it's kind of a spooky cartoon, I find. Yeah. It's a, I, yeah. It's a so, spooky. Uh, well, in a way, this is, it's a, it's a sort of a genre cartoon. I mean, uh -huh. the Tunnel of Love is a genre. Right. There's a lot of Tunnel of Love cartoons in The New Yorker. It's like a desert island joke. It's like there's variations of this, you know, Tunnel of Love. Or, uh, there's, um, I, yeah, I can't even think of examples, but cartoonists yeah. have often right. used this. And but I just want to, well, let's look at the cartoon okay. first, because I want to discuss it for a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, this, this makes us laugh a lot, and yet I, it's one of those things that you can't explain. If you were explaining it to someone, there's a couple, and they have a very spooked, frightened look <laughs> in their face, and they're going to an MRI of love. Now, yeah. I, I'm just thinking, this is kind of a visual non sequitur or is it what is it we you just can't put your finger on it <laughs> well they're and yet it's funny they're going into this thing and see you can't yeah, even explain it I can't even it's explain still it. no, that's, it's, but that's what I love about it it's just it's funny uh, without beyond reason it's funny yeah. uh, it's, now I asked you to pick out some cartoons that have resonated through the years with people or people have told you that this is my favorite this is my favorite and this uh, next cartoon is one that I, you always, oh, here. <laughs> oh, I did it again. Yeah. You know, you should have this. Yeah. yeah. You take yeah. this, you know. I had such interesting things to say. I, but this, I read this cartoon at, at, at the per perfect, let's describe it first, okay. a man reading the obituaries. Uh, can you see this? I don't know. Ten years younger than you, 12 years older than you, three years your junior. Exactly your age. Yeah. Five years, your, your age on the dot. I read this, I don't remember how old I was, but it, it, it really, I was right at the perfect age to read this because I never cared about the obits until I read this and I realized I was reading the obits and looking at people's ages yeah. and thinking all these thoughts. So I enjoyed that cartoon. And this was another one I remembered and never forgot. Uh, you can show it now. Now, you now sure? we need you it. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. This is called Stores of Mystery. And it, it really struck me because there's so many times you pass storefronts and shops, we'll get to this, and, and you think, is this shop, what does it sell? Uh, it, you know, they sell dresses that no one would buy. Uh, so you want to read this? Yes. The, the, it's, Fred's Drugs. Uh, Fred's Drugs, sur surrounded by cut-rate drugs and cosmetic emporiums that sell, let's say, a bottle of XYZ shampoo for 79 cents. Same bottle at Fred's, $2.09. <laughs> How does he do it? <laughs> um, beauty moi frocks. Weird clothes, always five seasons out of date, has been there forever. Store is usually pretty empty except for racks and racks of pantsuits and the like. 
Who shops here? <laughs> M&O typewriter supplies. <laughs> this place has been closed when everyone has walked by it. However, it's always there, meaning someone is continuing to pay rent on it. Why? <laughs> and tip-top goods. Boxes of saltines next to cartons of hairspray. <laughs> Wigs, Christmas decorations, halter tops, institutional-sized jars of olives. <laughs> Did all the stuff fall off a truck or what? Very um, good. This was, uh, these are some of people's favorites. Okay. Uh, this is on display at the Children's House of Horrors, the Hall of Snowsuits, um, <laughs> the plate where, where all the different foods are touching one another. <laughs> Um, uh, the gallery of inexplicable fears <laughs> and uh, kites, hair dryers, and fans. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, I was afraid of kites. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. Uh, and live demonstration of the shampoo. <laughs> um, one, three, and five. Very good. Now this one, I just love the title of this. It makes you laugh. But go uh, ahead. This is a uh, when, <laughs> uh, when moms dance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, this, uh, uh, this must figure it in your own life at some yes. point, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Actually, this one I took directly from life. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter really did say, she said, I, you know, there was some music, she was doing homework, and I kind of like, you know, la da da and, uh, <laughs> and she said, stop, you're hurting me. <laughs> and I just didn't have to change a word. So I keep on you? Uh, keep going. Uh, keep going. Okay. I'm having a ball. Uh, this is, um... <laughs> kind of goes down. There's an Edward Hopper thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Antiques collect the brickback garbage. Uh, this, um... <laughs> yeah. You know, uh... We've missed so we've missed missed so much, but your your drawing style in itself is funny. It's the strangest thing. It's uh, what you say is funny, the image is funny, but if you took out everything, you laugh at just the, the way it's drawn. Well, thank, thank oh, you. You're welcome. Oh. Uh, next. Next. Good. See, you need to tell me. <laughs> this is uh, the, the tournament of neurosis parade. The the I never really broke away from my parents' flow. Um, <laughs> The in my mind's eye uh, will always be a fat, short, frizzy-haired, glasses and braces wearing sixth grader float. Um, the people who have difficulty forming bonds of intimacy with other people float. The I only want what is unattainable float. The hypochondria float and the fear of chickens float. Um, uh, yeah, I love this. This is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, read they're it. just so brilliantly drawn. Oh, um, thank you. Really... Thanks. Uh, let me ask you a question. Oh. Is there anything where you go, this one must be in color, this one must be in black and white? Um, the, the ones that are longer, I like to draw in uh -huh. color because mm -hmm. I, I just think it makes it more interesting. And by the way, we should, we should say that uh, Roz and I have a book coming out together next year, a children's book, an alphabet book. And, yes. Uh, anyway. Anyway. Yeah. They're, they sound excited. You can hold your applause. They what? Sound, they sound excited. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, it was for children. Yes, yes, that's right. Um, um, and this is uh, another day in the salt mines, and the waiter's going, are you still working on that? And she says, no. In fact, I'm completely exhausted. Maybe if you wrap it up, I can finish working on it at home. And uh, another, they, another beautifully this, drawn interior. They're, they're, they say that to you now when you're eating. It's like, are you still working on that? And it's like, yeah. oh, I'm so tired. <laughs> Oh, my arms sawing away. This. Did you have to uh, perfect your drawing style or just come naturally? Did you finally say, I'm studying, I've learned how to do this, I've got to learn that? It's just a natural It's process. like, to me, it's like handwriting. I mean, uh -huh, I don't really, uh -huh. when I look yeah. at old New Yorker drawings, I really think these guys knew how to draw. And I'm just kind of making my way barely from one drawing to the next. Well, you know? you're wrong. Well, All right, right, next. Um, next. Okay. This is the Berlitz Guide to Floweries. Uh, congratulations. On, this is uh, congratulations on your stomach stapling. Um, I like you. I'm just not attracted to you. Um, have a great time in Nebraska or whatever. Uh, I apologize for saying your parents were degenerates. And happy birthday. It must feel weird to be 60. I, I, I just love the phrasing of have a great time in Nebraska or whatever. Or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even or wherever. 
is whatever. Whatever. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, assisted living on West 84th Street. Uh, this is, uh, by the way, I need $286 for the school ski trip by tomorrow. Oh, and also I need new skis. And say, since you're in the kitchen, could you get me a root beer with ice and, and a straw? <laughs> so, this Funny. is uh, tuned in, turned on, dropped out, dropped in, worked out, saved up, dropped dead. <laughs> this was like, for a little bit, oh, okay. For a little while, I got kind of uh, obsessed with making these pasanki eggs, and it was like a fever that finally broke. But um, I'm going to show you some of the, uh, the slides. This was like. And what uh, did, you, did you use them for Christmas ornaments? Uh, no. No, just... there was like no point to them at all. Mm -hmm. um, I just liked making them. Beautifully, beautifully colored. They were, it was really, really fun while I was into it. And, and I, you know why you did this? No. Uh, I just really, really, really wanted to do this. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> this is something you really, really wanted to do. Okay. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and I was obsessed. They and look uh, kind of Russian. Does yes, that that's, that's yeah. what the, the Pisanki like eggs are. You're a Fabergé egg. That's what yeah, yeah, yeah. version. Well, it's called Pisanki. It's a whole Russian thing with symbols, and people get really fanatic about it in lathes and junk. <laughs> uh, but, and they have symbols, but I made up my own. And what stuff. did your children say when you started doing this? It's like, Mom, this is enough now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. <laughs> And then finally, finally, Look at finally. This beautifully. Uh, oh, yeah. Ah. Ah, uh, okay. And finally, I, it got to this point where I wanted to do it for The New Yorker, but I couldn't figure out how to put the egg inside the magazine without, you know, cr crunching it. So uh, I wound up just doing a drawing of all these different eggs, and this was it. How, how long would it take you to do one? Uh, about a day. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a month right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah. We're going to save personal favorites for the end. Okay. And then we'll uh, take some questions from the audience. Okay. And, uh, uh, and so uh, if anyone has a question they would like to ask Roz Chast. Uh, all right, go ahead. Just. Who thought of the ideas for the book? She's asking who thought of the ideas for the book. Um, all of the ideas, all the ideas in the cartoons in the book are, are my ideas. You're talking about this book or our book? Our, our oh, book. our book. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I was a little concerned with your yeah. answer. Oh, yeah, that's true. We, you know. <laughs> wait a, wait a minute. We're going to go on a book tour together? <laughs> My ideas. He's like. Uh, it was a very simple problem. I had an idea for an alphabet book, and, I, and, and part of the uh, concept was that they would be illustrated. I would write as nutty a two-line couplet as I could on the letter A, and then a cartoonist or illustrator would exactly illustrate it as written. And, you know, meaning it would be sometimes impossible almost. And uh, I talked to Roz Chast, whom I obviously uh, adore and admire, and it worked out, and so we're very, very happy. And she did a great, great job. She really brought it to life. So thank you. Yes? Do you have sketchbooks all over the house near your bed? Do you have sketchbooks all over the house? Are there scraps? More like scraps. Uh, scraps of paper that get lost, go through the wash, things like that, memo pads. So you're, you're a disorganized uh, creator. Yeah. I mean, you, meaning some ideas just completely get lost. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah Absolutely. I do the same thing. Okay. Uh, here's, yes? Use watercolor? Yes. So the the question, question was, uh, do you... Use watercolor. Yeah. Yes, I use watercolor. Mm -hmm. Which is a tough medium. Um... Yeah. You, you seem to use it a wash. You, you do basically do a drawing and then you sort of color it in. Is that? I, yeah, the thing about water, yeah, I do, I pencil and then I ink in. And then when I do color, I start out with a kind of light colors approximately. You know, I put in the things that have to be there. Like if, if there's grass, generally it's going to be a shade of green. And so I know that the person standing on the grass wearing a dress is not going to be wearing a green dress. I kind of block out like the major areas. But the thing about watercolor that's nice is that because it's very light tones, you can start with light tones, you can build it up gradually. So. Well, this is over my head. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to wrap it up, but I, I hate to because we're having such a good time. But let's take a look at your personal favorite cartoons, and I'm going to let you control oh. that. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is um, the, the vain but realistic queen. Um, mirror, mirror on the wall. 
who, if she lost 10 pounds and had her eyes and her neck done and had the right haircut, could in her age group be the fairest <laughs> one of all? Um, uh, this is the mom and pop grocerette. And uh, there's, we never see you anymore. What's the matter? Maybe we don't carry enough of your fancy gourmet items. Um, guess you're all grown up and have your own life now. Don't worry about us. Um, I, I always like this. It's sort of a genre cartoon. You know, the guy with the end of the, um, the end of the, the end is near sign and. There's and I, I love the, the bus driver who has his own personality back there. You just kind of know that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's just It's very of... nice. Well, Roz, this has been a, a, a great morning. It was just to, to see all your work, it's astounding. And uh, the continued creativity, and as I say, I'm so impressed with the, just the writing ability and the drawing ability and, and the way these uh, cartoons are rendered so, in such a humorous way. And you've really made your own great body of work, as so did Van Gogh. And <laughs> so thank you very much, and thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you.